Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beer Review. I do apologise. This seat is a swine to get on with, different seats. I'm used to stagnant seats, not these spongy things. So the last in my series of beer reviews from Batemans Brewery. Um, I've gone through all their beers that are available in supermarkets. There may have been a couple of releases, but I know nothing of them. I've seen something on the internet. Uh, possibly a review from another beer reviewer, but uh, hey ho. So here we are, only available at the brewery or online. It's limited edition, 30, 2013 uh, vintage ale. So I did a review of this every week. That was the 2014 version, kindly gifted to me by a friend of the channel on his birthday. And his good lady came to the um, Willie's uh, Bar and Brewery over in Cleethorpes. So, thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Here's the beer. Uh, we'll have a chat, we'll have a drink, and we'll see how it corks. So, here we go. We used to brew a barley wine back in the 1970s. And my father, George, took the last 10 cases of the final bottling and hid them under the fermenting vessels to be opened on April the 5th, 1981, my 21st birthday. Which means, he's 64 years old now, isn't it? Uh, but then he forgot about them. In 2007, our fermenting moon foreman said, Stuart, are we ever going to open these bottles? I'm surprised anybody waited. I'd have been cracking into them buggers before then. I'd have been looking and thinking, I'm having one of them, you know, regardless. Um, anyway, are you going to try and pretend you're not 21 yet? We opened the bottle to find it was the most delicious, exciting beer we had ever tasted. Just bursting with flavours, plums, port, malt, brandy, vanilla and almonds. This long matured, oak aged vintage air is a perfect match for that 21st birthday beer. Cheers. And on the back it's signed Stuart Bateman, Joey Lehman and Martin Cullimore. And it says on here, Batemans are great family brewers who have been brewing beer in their windmill on the beautiful bank of the River Steeping in Lincolnshire since 1874, 150 years now. Um, visit the fantastic Victorian brew house, sit out by the river. Enjoy the food and beer. Play the old pub games. Discover the 4,500 bottled beer collection. And investigate the fan fascinating exhibits. Fun for all the family. 7.5% ABV. So, yeah, a nice beer for me to uh, end my uh, beer review night over in Raggy's Tap Room. I did review this over in my... Um, caravan thing, uh, mobile home thing, whatever you call them, um, over in Cleethorpes, but the beer room is where it should be. Reviewing it today in a Castle Rock Brewery glass. Why Castle Rock Brewery? Because Bread and Bitter on Mapley Top is the only Castle Rock Brewery pub that has XB, XB Bitter from Batemans on cask and it's a, per, it's a permanent line. So I thought it married both things and, uh, you know, ended the story rather well. Like everything, it's time to move on. And, uh, and there we go. So. On the camera, uh, it's a very hazy... Um, I'm waiting to see if it clears. It may well clear, to be fair. But it's a hazy, I'd say browny looking pour. It looks like a barley wine, to be honest. With a couple of fingers and a half of just slightly off white head. Now, I've had this twice already. Once gifted to me, once I just drank. Because, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. And once more for review. And the aroma is sublime on this. Um, 
different fruits. And there's a strength of ABV in the aroma. Oh, complexities through the roof. It, it is some beer. There are a lot of beers out there that are bland and boring. There's a hell of a lot of bland and boring beers. But a beer that delivers aroma that is simply, there's so much to get from the aroma. And uh, it would be unkind of me to actually gift you all what you're supposed to get. Read the back of the bottle, for starters. Read, read what you drink, you know. And then enjoy and try and pick out flavours. But let me tell you. It's a beauty. And I've just noticed I've spilt some egg and bacon down me. Well, some egg from the egg and bacon cobs I've just had. Do apologise. There you go. Um, I put the cam, uh, the glass back in the way now. Bloody hell! Now this some real hidden gems there and I, I don't want to spoil your fun usually on the beer review I'll spout out everything but this beer review no I want you to to go to the brewery order online and get yourself a bottle of this or get yourself a case of this if you like a decent beer it's not silly it's not silly priced either when we look at supermarket beers these days the, the price of supermarket of beers is becoming that high that the breweries that can produce quantity and sell it cheaply enough are actually the better option. Especially if you trigger the free delivery. Because then you, you, you trigger free delivery and with the price of what you get you're actually winning. I wanted to sign out on the Bateman's Beer Reviews uh, in a good way, and there's no better way than this. Literally, just recently, since I've been to Lincolnshire, to the brewery, I've gone through all the beers. I've even done uh, several different of their cask beers. Uh, the new 5G, the Buxton Brewery collab, um, oh, Yellow Belly, Gold, um, oh, there's another one. Obviously, Bateman's Triple X. Um, there may have been a couple of uh, casts that hooker as well, the rugby themed one. And uh, there may be some beers that I'd like to try, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you can't win a morning in that respect. Flavours, oh my gosh. It's a true beaut of a beer. My previous review of Vintage Ale will give you all you need to know. And uh, this review is about telling you how good a beer it is without spoiling um, how good it is. And, uh, and what are you going to, the flavours and aroma. Oh. It's one of them times where I'm not going to give you everything. I'm, I'm going to be um, a person that says, go and try the beer. Tell me what you get from the beer. And, uh, and enjoy a quality beer that you can't get in supermarkets. That there's plenty of, as far as I know at least. Um, an 11 year old beer and the best before date let me just pour that in there you can see how hazy it is there it means nothing to me um, haziness best after December the 2013 um, best before December 2038 that is a staggering 
bloody best before on a beer. So literally, from the date I'm reviewing it now, it's still got a 14 year date on it. Crazy. So from Brood, 25 year date on a beer. That is amazing, you know? I've got some beers up there, two beers, a wedding beer and one from Castle Rock called Kiss Me Kate. Kiss Me Kate is not, um, it's only for collectors, you know, it's not for drinking. It's only five and a half percent, so it would not stood the test of time. Which is, you know, I mean, I could try and drink it, but, uh, yeah. I think I'll leave it there as, as a memento of, um, of um, collaborate, you know, friendship with Castle Rock Brewery. Um, well, here we go. So, as you can see, it's a bit more hazy than what it was. But, uh, wow, vintage ale. Um, the 150th year of Bateman's Brewery. I'm sure uh, with their recent acquisitions in pubs, they will go on really well. We may well see them in Nottingham at the Robin Hood Beer Festival. We may not. Who knows? They used to do the Beer Festival, as did a lot of other breweries. And obviously, breweries, their ethos changes. Their, you know, their... I suppose their willingness to go to local beer festivals changes, I suppose. And obviously since COVID, the world changed. Um, the last time I seen Bateman's Brewery was at the 2019 Robin Hood Beer Festival over the uh, Motor Point uh, Ice Stadium in Nottingham. Obviously we're now at 2020 was a washout, obviously. But since 2021... We've been at the cricket ground, and uh, yeah, um, as much as I'm not a no allegiance to camera um, at all, um, and uh, they certainly show no no allegiance to me in any way, shape, or form, um, which is sad, really, because as a person who supports the beer world, I'm probably the most vocal. Um, in Nottinghamshire and probably the East Midlands and probably further beyond that but uh, who knows eh? um, but um, yeah it's uh, hopefully we'll see them back at the beer festival um, the beer festival does seem to have been took over recently by more breweries aspiring to be craft breweries uh, rather than what they are um, and uh, you know um, having a having a, a brewery that as generations of brewing would be interesting to have them back on the bar but <clears throat> that's just my opinion obviously of course anyway here we go flavour in that is sublime um, and again I am not going to tell you what the flavour is what a beer review eh? I've come to watch your beer review you're not telling me the flavours I'm telling you though uh, you need to try it uh, there's complexities on both the aroma and the taste off the charts yes it's a, it's a beer to sip Obviously, watch out for the last bit of the bottle. Because of the bottle-conditioned element, it's going to be a bit more hazier, of course. But uh, it's a beer to enjoy. 7.5%. Um, tastes more like a 95 to 10%. Certainly when the uh, the bottom bit comes into play. Um, and uh, for me, probably the best of the uh, Bateman's Brewery beers. Although Victory Ale comes a very close second, 
Moon for Triple XB, a very close third. Uh, the rest obviously have come after that, um, including the cask beers that I've had. Um, yeah, would I drink this again? Yes, of course. Yes. Um, not that I've got any, but yeah, would love to drink it again. Out of five, for me. And again, you know, this is a, a fantastic beer. Wow, I can feel the booziness. Jesus Christ, just move my head then and it's like, whoa. Um, out of five for me, a good 4.5 out of five, if not higher. Scores matter not. The fact that I really enjoy it and uh, the complexities are off the charts. You'll have to drink it to understand that. Although you can watch my previous review to, to fully understand where I'm going from. Um, it's more of a sign-off review than, you know, than anything else. But anyway, Bateman's been to jail. Thank you. And uh, cheers all. And uh, see you soon.